a mysterious object in our solar system could be an alien mothership sending smaller probes to monitor the Earth. According to a new draft report co-authored by the head of the Pentagon's UFO Research Office, it was written by the Pentagon's All-Domain Anomaly Resolution Office Director Sean Kirkpatrick and the chairman of Harvard University's Astronomy Department Abraham Loeb, who warned of the possibility of a big ship out there. Formed in 2022, the AARO's aim is to track everything and anything unidentified, be that in the sky as far out as space or even things underwater. In 2005, the U.S. Congress tasked NASA to find 90% of all near-Earth objects that are larger than 140 meters. The Congressional Task Force resulted in the construction of the Pan-STARRS telescopes. On October 19, 2017, the Pan-STARRS Sky Survey flagged an unusual NEO, the interstellar object Oumuamua. Unlike solar system asteroids or comets, Oumuamua appeared to have an extreme flat shape and was pushed away from the sun without showing a cometary tail of gas and dust, raising the possibility that it was thin and artificial in origin. Three years later, Pan-STARRS discovered a definitely artificial object, namely NASA's rocket booster 2020SO, which exhibited similar behavior with an extreme shape, a push by the solar radiation pressure, and no cometary tail because its thin walls were made of stainless steel. On March 9, 2017, six months before Oumuamua's closest approach to Earth, a meter-sized interstellar meteor called IM-2 collided with Earth. Surprisingly, IM-2 had an identical speed relative to the Sun at large distances and an identical heliocentric semi-major axis as Oumuamua had. But the inclination of IM-2's orbital plane around the Sun was completely different from Oumuamua's, implying that the two objects are unrelated. Nevertheless, the coincidences between some orbital parameters of Oumuamua and IM-2 inspires us to consider the possibility that an artificial interstellar object could potentially be a parent craft that releases many small probes during its close passage to Earth, an operational construct not too dissimilar from NASA missions. These dandelion seeds could be separated from the parent craft by the tidal gravitational force of the sun or by maneuvering capability. A small ejection speed far away could lead to a large deviation from the trajectory of the parent craft near the sun. The changes would manifest both in arrival time and distance of closest approach to Earth. With proper design, these tiny probes would reach the Earth or other solar system planets for exploration as the parent craft passes within a fraction of the Earth-Sun separation, just like Oumuamua did. Within a close range to a star, extraterrestrial technological probes could use starlight to charge their batteries and liquid water as their fuel. This would explain why they would target the habitable region around stars where liquid water may exist on the surface of rocky planets with an atmosphere, like the Earth. Habitable planets would be particularly appealing to transmedium probes capable of moving between space, air, and water. From a large distance, Venus, Earth, or Mars would be equally attractive for probes. But upon closer inspection, Earth would show spectral signatures of liquid water through reflection of blue light and vegetation through its red edge that might attract selective attention. What would be the overarching purpose of the journey? In analogy with actual dandelion seeds, the probes could propagate the blueprint of their senders. As with biological seeds, the raw materials on the planet's surface could also be used by them as nutrients for self-replication or simply scientific exploration. It is important to note that given the timescales associated with the propulsion scheme discussed here, it is unreasonable to assert that the intention of any such probe launched in the far distant past has anything to do with the human species. More likely, and similar to NASA's missions, the goal would be scientific and exploratory in nature. Based on the detection rate of interstellar objects, Siraj and Loeb estimated that for every interstellar near-Earth object, there are a thousand solar system NEOs of the same size. 
Searching for interstellar meteorites among the many more meteorites from the solar system without information about impact velocity is like searching for a needle in a haystack. This is why the first interstellar meteor, IM-1, confirmed by Velocity Measurement of the U.S. Space Command, is the target of a fully funded ocean expedition by the Galileo Project. Hopefully, by retrieving IM-1's fragments within the coming year, we will know whether its extraordinary material strength resulted from it being made out of an artificial alloy like stainless steel or materials not yet developed by humans. The academic interest in UAP stems from their potential non-human technological origin. Extraterrestrial equipment could arrive in two forms. Space trash, similar to the way our own interstellar probes, Voyager 1 and 2, Pioneer 10 and 11, and New Horizons will appear in a billion years, or functional equipment such as autonomous devices equipped with artificial intelligence. Electronic probes employing conventional chemical propulsion and refueling that we currently understand would be a likely choice for travel within a planetary system. Some combination of conventional propulsion, ion propulsion, or light cell propulsion would provide good choices for crossing the tens of thousands of light years that span the scale of the Milky Way galaxy. Such autonomous systems could be designed to survive even if the senders are not able to communicate with them and deposit probes upon arrival to the target planetary systems. It is likely that any functional devices embedded in the Earth's atmosphere are not carrying biological entities because these would not survive the long journey through interstellar space and its harsh conditions, including bombardment by energetic cosmic rays, X-rays, and gamma rays. Interstellar gas and dust particles deposit a kinetic energy per unit mass that exceeds the output of chemical explosives at the speed of tens of kilometers per second. However, technological devices with AI can be shielded to withstand the hazards of space, repair themselves mechanically, or even reproduce given the resources of a habitable planet like Earth. With machine learning capabilities, they can adapt to new circumstances and pursue the goals of their senders without any need for external guidance. Parts 3 through 5 of the paper go into scientific detail regarding propulsion methods, optical emissions, and other observable signatures. A link to the draft version is provided in the description of this video. Some archive viewers may be asking themselves if we are turning into a UFO channel after posting two videos on the subject back to back. The quick and definite answer to that question is no. However, modern-day sightings of unidentified anomalous phenomena are indeed directly connected to the ancient astronaut hypothesis. In fact, this paper takes the word ancient to a whole different level. It implies that self-replicating probes could reach habitable planets around sun-like stars in less than a billion years. And since most stars form more than a billion years before the sun, it is possible that other technological civilizations predated ours by the amount of time needed for their devices to reach Earth. Before we end this brief presentation, the archive would like to point out one last observation made in this paper. In Part 3, concerning propulsion methods, the authors state, quote, These self-replicating systems would necessarily be looking for water in order to generate fuel. Our viewers know all too well there was a man that already explained this propulsion method decades ago. Indeed, it was Zachariah Sitchin who deciphered that the first Anunnaki ship to reach Earth was propelled by water.